Crossroads Media. Literally, I open my eyes at 7 a.m. and the first thing I see is James Harden in China going full vocal that Daryl Morey is a liar and I'm never going to play for an organization that has him in it. Here's the thing. Yo, James, okay? Look, I don't know what was once said when it comes to money, when it comes to a contract. Hey, nod, nod, wink, wink, we'll hook you up down the road. I don't know. It would just be speculation. I'm sure, knowing their relationship and knowing how close they are, at some point, to some level, there was dialogue on what they were going to do moving forward. But let's not act like James Harden isn't a real problem here. Everywhere he goes, it ends like this towards the end. Okay, so I'm not letting Daryl Morey off the hook for everything, but I'm not blaming him more than I'm blaming James Harden. James, dude, remember Christmas time when there was no reason at all for Woj to drop a huge bomb on us on Christmas Day when the Sixers are getting ready for action, when they're going to go compete and play the New York Knicks? Well, James Harden's going to try and get his way back to Houston. James Harden, well, where did that come from? You and your little buddies and your team started to leak info, and you did that at that time of the year. Your brain's always been all over the map, okay? This is what you wanted. You wanted out of here, and it's going to take Daryl Morey to do it. You don't want to piss him off because he'll play the long game, as he should. Daryl Morey shouldn't get rid of him just to try and save this season and not have the long term in mind because contractually speaking, Tobias Harris will be off the books. James Harden, getting him off the books, it opens up what you can do if you bring back some roll pieces and some random slop that's not going to help you legitimately. It may actually cause a trickle-down effect and then ruin what maybe could have been with free agency or anything else. So, I think it would be foolish to get him out of your face just because he's angry. It's bad optically, right? It is a tough look to hear an NBA player call out someone he's that close with and say that he's a full-on liar. What's Tyrese Maxey thinking? Because we already saw that they were playing the waiting game for him and his contract. How's Joel Embiid feel? Okay, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. It's another season where I have to deal with garbage. Ben Simmons didn't want to be here. Now it's James. It's crazy. I thought at one point that maybe they'd be able to hash this out. They went to the party with Michael Rubin, the all-white party. They were hanging out there. It didn't seem like they despised one another. And Joel Embiid publicly got asked a couple questions, and he said, this is just part of the business. I love James Harden. I would love for him to be back here. He's he's one of my guys, but he's got to do what he's got to do. That doesn't mean it's any less frustrating to go to training camp and before the ball even tips with a new coach, you're dealing with this level of drama. That's what... James Harden wants, though. He wants it to be uncomfortable. What he's forgetting, though, is that Daryl Morey operates very well when he's uncomfortable. Some don't. Some let the pressure get to them, then they do stupid things. We're not messing around, all right? So when when, when there's information leaked about a day ago or so that they're not fielding any more calls, and I don't know why Daryl Morey would push that agenda because that's what happened. The Sixers, Daryl Morey, that's who leaked that side of the story for James Harden to even have the rebuttal that was released by Shams Monday morning by James Harden's camp. So they were countering what Daryl Morey leaked. I don't know why he was saying that. Was he pushing the buttons? Was he kind of poking the bear is the best way to describe it? I'm not really sure what the mindset and the philosophy is. That's why I'm saying there are some details to this that make me wonder why, Daryl, what was the reasoning? Why would you put that out there? It's the middle of August at this rate. You know when basketball season starts? You got to the end of October. So there's a lot of time until then. What was the purpose for over the weekend? I'm just getting annoyed. I really am. They are sucking the fun out of Sixers basketball for me, and I've been more optimistic than most 
I actually wanted to run it back with James Harden and Nick Nurse and, because I think that gives you the best opportunity and the best chance to kind of save what this is. It might not be enough. It may not get you a championship. But I know the alternative could be horrendous. And I'm willing to take another swing at it. Now, it's like I don't even know what to do anymore. I'm in my feelings, right? So right now, I'm telling you that there's no buzz. But maybe as soon as they play 10, 15 games and I start to see a style and Tyrese Maxey picks up some things from Nick Nurse and they start to incorporate this awesome electric intense defense and it's just a, a fun watch. I don't know. Maybe I, I do. Be, I, I do enjoy it because let's say the bar is super low and the expectations are dry because of all this and then bang, you get smacked in the face with something that's entertaining. I'm not ruling that out at all, but it's hard for me to see that right now as we're sitting in the filth and we're sitting in the slop. And that's exactly what this is. James Harden wanted to slop this thing up, make it super messy. He went for it twice. He did the old double dip. Let me repeat it. Let me say it again. Daryl Morey is a liar, which is a huge statement to say publicly about one of the most respected president of basketball ops that are in the league right now. He does have a big resume, and people do love Daryl Morey, and he's straight up taking shots at him and doesn't give a damn whatsoever because he wants it to get so ugly that there's a knee-jerk reaction, but he's forgetting who he's dealing with. He should know. If he's someone who is as close as Daryl Morey as he is, and we know that their relationship was strong, they were super, super close I don't know if this is the route I would like to take. And James, dude, you saw the market, man. You know it's not what you anticipated, hence why you opted in. You put yourself in this position. You screwed up. You wouldn't be here if you just opted out and then went to wherever you wanted. But hold on, here's the kicker, man. That wasn't an option for you because you know the rest of the league said you aren't worth the top dollar. You're not worth that contract. And this is a business. And if at one point Daryl Morey thought that maybe he would be worth that type of cash and then saw how he played in Game 6, saw how he played in Game 7, saw how he played in basically every game except for the two that he dropped 40-plus, well then once again it goes back to you. If you balled out, then you're not in this predicament. You controlled the final outcome. It sucks when it's your franchise. We see this happen all the time in this league when it's everybody else. And you laugh at them, you crack up, look at these bums, look at what they have to deal with. Now it's you. And it just makes you reflect back to everything we've been through. Dating back to when Ben got drafted. and It's just horrible, man. It's horrible. Is it karma for tanking on purpose? Blah, 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 blah. It didn't need to be this way. Didn't need to be this way. I love Joel Embiid to death. I don't want to blow this thing up because finding an MVP caliber guy, it doesn't happen very often. Allen Iversons don't grow on trees. Joel Embiid's don't grow on trees. But there just seems to be something that smells horrible that's following this franchise. The Black Cloud. 